Hey guys, Mish here, and today I have a study for you looking at which type of exercise is best for depression. Aerobic exercise, like cardio, or non-aerobic exercise, like resistance training or weightlifting. This topic has been on my very, very, very long list of video topics for a long time now, and I think with quarantine, it is especially relevant because with everyone being stuck at home, pretty much, I feel like that can really aggravate depression in people who are uh, predisposed to it and make it worse in people who are already feeling depressed. So hopefully this video can be helpful for those of you who are having a hard time or whose loved ones are having symptoms of depression during this. And if you are looking into this topic, then you've probably heard of the idea of exercising out of depression. So there's a lot of research showing that exercise is good for depression, can help you reduce your depressive symptoms, so it's often used as a treatment in addition to other things. I feel like I've seen a lot of debate out there on whether uh, cardio or weightlifting is better for depression. So I wanted to get right at the heart of the issue and I found a study that directly compares running with weightlifting and how much it helps with symptoms of depression. And in this study, the researchers had 40 women who were diagnosed with minor or major depression and they randomly assigned them to one of three groups. One group did running, one group did weightlifting, and the other group was a weightlist control who was asked not to exercise. And none of them are really doing exercise to begin with. And importantly, none of these participants were doing any other kind of treatment for depression. And so these women were not taking antidepressants or anything like that. And this study looked at how much exercising helped them with their symptoms of depression over the course of eight weeks. In the running condition, they had participants run or walk in an indoor track, and they had them run or walk at a pace that kept them at 80% of their maximum heart rate. So they had an experimenter there taking the participant's pulse every few minutes to make sure that they were staying in the optimal range so that everyone was doing the same intensity based on their own body's capabilities. In the weightlifting group, they had participants use a universal exercise machine and do 10 different exercises, and they made sure their heart rate stayed below 50 to 60% of their max. So it was important because they wanted to make sure they were looking at aerobic exercise, which was running, versus non-aerobic exercise, which is a relatively lower heart rate of weightlifting. And they tested all of these participants for depression symptoms both before they started these different programs, in the middle of that eight-week period, and at the end of the eight-week period. And they also did three follow-up tests after this whole exercise program was done at one month, seven months, and 12 months later. So this study is a really nice way to look at how doing an eight-week exercise program now might help you with depression, even over the course of a year. And so now to get into the results, the participants were asked to do their exercise, depending on which program they were in, uh, four times per week, but on average they only did it 2.8 times per week. So keep in mind with all these results, they were actually only doing two to three of these exercise sessions per week for the eight weeks. And both exercise groups had a gigantic improvement in depression symptoms, whereas the waitlist control group, who did not do any exercise, did not see any improvement. And just for the numbers, People went from a score of 22 to 23 on this depressive symptom scale to a score of 6 to 8. So that is a massive decrease in the number of symptoms of depression that they were reporting. So their levels of depressive symptoms were only one-third of what they were at the beginning of the study after they did this eight-week exercise program. And interestingly, the group who was um, waitlisted and not doing any of these exercise programs gained weight over the course of these eight weeks, whereas the two groups who did do exercise did not gain weight. They didn't quite lose weight, but I think not gaining weight when you're depressed is a very uh, positive thing. And after these eight weeks, the percentage of people who were no longer depressed was 67% in the running group, 80% in the weightlifting group, and only 17% in the weightlist control group. So both of the exercise groups just saw massive, massive improvements in depression, so much so that most people weren't even depressed anymore after doing either of those exercises. And for the key question you are probably here for, there was no significant difference between the running group and the weightlifting group in terms of how much it decreased their depressive symptoms and how many were no longer depressed after the study. Importantly though, this was at the eight-week period, so we haven't gotten to the follow-up over the course of the year yet. And so for the follow-up tests after that initial eight-week period, they only looked at the two exercise groups, so there was no longer a weightlist control group. But they found that at both one month and seven months after they were done with their prescribed exercise program, both the runners and the weightlifters were still 80% non-depressed. So 80% of them still kept their benefit of no longer being depressed. But interestingly, at 12 months, so a year later, 
a lot more people who ran were depressed than people who lifted weights. Only 30% of the runner group was still not depressed, whereas 80% of the weightlifter group was still not depressed. This was not a significant difference because people dropped out of the study over the course of this year, and so the number of participants they had got a lot lower, but there was a difference that was pretty big. So it's not really clear if weightlifting actually is better than running, but if there is one that seems to win, it seems to be weightlifting by a little bit. And if it is true that weightlifting is better than running after a year, I wonder if it could be because the aesthetic gains from weightlifting can be maintained even if you go through a period of overeating and like they tend to last longer. So if you gain a bunch of muscle over the course of many months, then even if you stopped lifting for a little while and start kind of eating a lot and gaining weight, you can still see your muscle <laughs> underneath any fat you might gain. Whereas with running, I feel like the confidence boosting benefits are mostly there as long as you're doing it. This is just my uh, theory. It's not clear if that's actually the case. But yeah, so it looks like both running and weightlifting are equally amazing for helping you with depression while you're doing them. And they seem to have very long-lasting benefits over the course of a year, and particularly weightlifting. But the main takeaway from this study is that you should do whatever type of exercise that you enjoy the most and that you find the easiest to motivate yourself to do. Because I think the hardest thing about depression is that it can be so hard just to get yourself to start exercising. So I hope this study can help you to get the motivation to do whatever exercise that you enjoy the most, not just one that you think will help the most per se. Because it seems like multiple types of exercises can help. And if you're like me, you may want to try both running and weightlifting because I enjoy doing both of them. I only do them a couple times a week and it definitely helps with my mental health. I hope you liked this study as much as I did and I hope it can be of use to you or anyone you know who may want to try exercising to help with their depression. Of course, it's not a replacement for seeking therapy and treatment. It's just a nice extra thing you can do. I don't suggest just exercising and not seeking treatment, but it can definitely be helpful. Thanks so much for watching and please like, share, and subscribe if you want to support me. I would really appreciate it. Also head on over to my Patreon if you want to donate to help me keep making these videos. And I hope you stay safe and well and I will see you next time.